Todd here at HO Scale Customs. Today I'm going to talk to you about weathering pencils and how we designed our own weathering pencils. Actually, we didn't design them, we just went out and bought them. They are watercolor pencils. Keep this in mind watercolor pencils. There's a whole set. Some of them are sitting over here because we're going to be using them. And it gives you an array of colors $16. That's with the coupon. So I bought another set. Windsor Newton, a little higher end. Watercolor pencils with my coupon, 55% off. Cost me about, at the, any of the Hobby Lobby, wherever, you know, AC Moore, Michaels, whoever's running the best coupon special, go there. Any art supply place, they're going to have these. They're watercolor pencils. Do not buy colored pencils. It's not going to work. You're not going to get weathering effects out of colored pencils. All you're going to get is little pencil lines that you can't do anything with. And you're going to have to repaint over them. With this $40 set of 24 pencils, I paid about $17 or $18 with my coupon at AC Moore. Okay, we want to make sure we're using watercolor pencils. We're going to achieve some weathering effects. One of the weathering effects that I worked with here tonight will be with some rust. And I'm going to put some rust in and around the bottom of this uh, plate with the rivets. I don't know much about watering, well, about these industrial towers. This is just a industrial tower set from Walders. I don't know much about the tanks or anything else. That's not my line of work. Anyways, I take these watercolor pencils, which have a little bit of a softer core, and they're water-soluble. And I'm just going to put some rust around the rivets. And I'm just going to show you real quick. Put some rust on the rivets. Okay, a little dark. And then maybe a spot in the center here. Some rust underneath. And maybe a little bit on this top part. While we're at it, we can blend some colors. So we'll take like a, a brown or dark brown. Um, and this will be like a, a burnt umber, more of your darker rust. And just put a little bit there on the top, mix it in with it. Maybe put a little bit on the rivets or next to the rivets. And let's do a streak down from it. I'll do another streak. Go on this side and bump the camera. Okay, so what I'm going to just do is take a round brush like this. This is an artist loft paintbrush, nothing fancy. I'm going to dip it into some water and remove some of the water onto my paper towel in front of me. And I'm going to just drag down with a little bit of the damp brush, drag downward, and move my pigments. And you can push these pigments into the crevices, corners, wherever, but I want to drag them down to make it look like rust is running. And we'll just do it here. Let's take some of that off. You could just like a paintbrush, you can you can remove some of the paint. Okay, and we want to make sure we take some of the water off. And we're just gonna diffuse diffuse our our paints or our watercolors around these rivets. Very simple, very easy. Get some streaking. And I'm adding rust to my water tower or my oil tank or what, I'm not sure what these are. Some kind of industrial tank. I don't know what they store in them. Please don't write and tell me what they're in them because guess what? I don't really care. I just know that they're tanks. You can take the water off and you can thin this down as much as you want. I don't want it to be overly bright. I'm kind of liking that. I did another one a little while ago. And there you go. You got your rust showing. You can, if it looks too orangish down underneath, like I just did there, let's remove some of that water. You can do the legs, you can do the top, you can do the sides. It's all real easy. And what that, what that took, what, a minute? So we're going to remove a lot of the water and we can just keep removing 
till we get white streaks in between and make it look like uh make it look like it's streaking down so there we go we got a little bit of focus i'll show you one of the dry ones i did earlier and we have it here same kind of deal this is a bigger tank i even did some along the edges here along the side showing some wear and dirt that came down off of rain or whatever and you get the streaking effects i really like what came out of that okay we could also add some mildew um with greens or whatever um mold and mildew and i'll show you that in just a minute okay so let's bring our tank back here it's dry now and we're going to put a little mildew at the bottom of the tank not a lot just a little bit and because mildew sometimes builds up at the base of of tanks so i want to go with like a dark green so i'm going to take this dark green color and i'm just going to scribble it on Go with another shade of green here. Now I'm just kind of blending my greens, the green shades, and just trying to get some mildew color on it. A lighter green, a more brighter mildew. And again, let's add some brown where the mildew starts to turn to old rotted mildew. We're just kind of blending the colors. Okay. And then I'll just take my water or my round brush. Actually, let's use a flat brush. A flat brush will work too. So we'll take it with our flat brush because here we're not really making streaks. We're making more of a mildew. And we can spread this out. wherever we want dry it off we need to add a little more so let's blot it get some of my brighter green here and it's a you have to trial and error this is the first time i've actually worked with these on a piece of plastic i've done some wood i'm going to show you in just a moment but um, I want to just add some brown in there. Didn't think I had enough brown. Or umber. And some green again. Some dark green. All right. And again, take our water. And take some water out of that. If you put too much water on, you'll totally diffuse it out and you won't see any of your any of your work. It'll just totally disappear, which is okay because you can make it go. You can make it disappear. So I can add some mildew or green along the bottom on a white tank. And I'll just try it real quick for you. I'll bring it in. You can see some of the mildew. The one color I use is a little bit uh, bluish, and I didn't really like that. But you, know, you get the idea. This is how easy it is to diffuse it. You no longer see pencil lines. And now you see uh, your your blended colors, and you can drag them. You can drag that mildew up higher, you know, like this. Give it some streak. Just kind of go like that and let it dry and you'll see uh we'll come back to that or we can just draw some on there just give it a line a little dark green again if you want them higher Take your water out and just drag it. Just diffusing it. You're taking the pigments and moving them to where you want them. 
and you get some mildew. Could have even made a darker green if I'd have dug in the box for it. But there you go. I'll show you what I did with mildew on a piece of wood um, from an old structure that I have. And I put some mildew stains on the actual wood itself. And I like how this stuff works with the wood. Unfortunately, I don't have any other wood to, on a kit nearby or close by where I could show you how that works. But um, I used some greens and yellows and burnt umbers. And then I diffused them and I gave this door this old moldy, crusty look. And I really, really like how that turned out. You can see it down into the greens. It was very, very cool. Um, anyhow. That's how that worked. So, as you can see, there's lots of things you can do with the uh, different shades um, of different colors that are available. And you don't have to go out and buy expensive weathering pencils. You can get this all done with a little work and a little imagination. And you can add your own weathering streaks. You can draw a line straight down, just like I did on this one in particular. And I'll get a brush here. We'll go with a round brush this time. And I want to get a, an old brown crusty streak down the side. Some old, old rust. Just kind of drag it. I can make these as bright as I want. Like these other ones were light. But here you got a nice bright one. Diffuse the sides out a little bit. Then you get that kind of look, that kind of rust. So that's it on that. So that color covers our watercolor pencils, not colored pencils, used as weathering pencils. Something that you can, you know, definitely pick up at any craft store on a cheap and work with them and figure out how they work best and what mediums. Uh, I found I showed you tonight. They work on plastic and they work on wood. Um, and that's painted wood surface too, or painted plastic surface. Uh, definitely, it's something worthwhile to try out. So, if you like this video or any of our videos, hit the like and subscribe button down here. Okay, give us a like. Check us out at HSGO Customs on Facebook. Check out the Bench Time podcast every Friday. We have a new episode come out and we have some awesome guests we give tips and hints and tricks it's a good time we have a lot of fun it's about an hour long and it's a weekly podcast every week check us out on instagram at ho scale customs like us there as well we also have uh thousands of photos on there that we put in over the last couple years um to check out and uh you know there's also some tips and such there thank you very much Peace out.